Let me start right off by saying that uh, I believe that Ukraine has lost the war. Now, of course, the war is not over, but it is lost. Let me show you why. This has become an artillery duel. Russia fires 50,000 shells a day, 10 times more than Ukraine. The Washington Post says that Ukraine is almost completely out of ammunition, and there are no replacements for its Soviet-era ordnance. On June 10th, the Post reported that Ukraine is suffering 1,000 casualties a day, including 200 killed. The rate of casualties has doubled in just three weeks. And Ukraine is losing 6,000 soldiers killed every month. This is a casualty rate 12 times higher than we suffered in Vietnam. This, on a per capita basis, this means that their casualty rate is roughly 60 times greater than the U.S. suffered during the very bloody war in Vietnam. Ukrainians have, have fought with courage, but no nation can sustain such casualty rates for long. Ukraine is finished. On June the 12th, yesterday, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg all but admitted that Ukraine would soon be forced to sue for peace. He said, the only question is what price are you willing to pay for peace? How much territory, how much independence, how much sovereignty are you willing to sacrifice for peace? Stoltenberg's remarks <coughs> suggest that NATO recognizes that the war is lost. It's now become an unpleasant distraction that simply needs to be wrapped up as far as NATO is concerned. <coughs> the sanctions war has failed. The entire financial might of the Western world was unleashed against Russia. Today, the ruble is stronger than before the war. This year, it has been the strongest of all currencies. Russian inflation peaked around 15% and is expected to subside. But as their inflation tops out, Europe's and America's has just begun skyrocketing dangerously. Biden's attempt to strangle Russian trade has failed. Despite sanctions, Russia has forged stronger ties with China, India, South Africa, Iran, Brazil, Saudi Arabia. Important countries in the global south are refusing to obey Washington's order to impose sanctions. Independent countries fear the U.S., but they resent being told who they may and may not trade with. Dictating sanction policy to sovereign nations is diminishing the world's respect for America. From the outset of the war, Russians have never experienced shortages of food, housing, heating, fuel, or gasoline. Anyone who expects Russians to crack from the loss of Gucci purchase, purchase or Big Mac hamburgers do not understand the Russian psyche. President Putin's popularity rose to 83%, which is greater than any of his Western counterparts. Meanwhile, the propaganda war is unraveling. At the outset of war, the United States unleashed carefully orchestrated barrage of anti-Russian propaganda. All dissenting voices were blocked from the media. Recently, however, news outlets have begun acknowledging the possibility of a Ukrainian defeat. On June 10th, Newsweek reported that even the deputy head of Ukrainian military intelligence has admitted that Ukraine was at risk of losing the war to Russia. The first cracks are forming, and soon the world must come to grips with reality. The war is lost.